Hello, this is Mr. Ward, and you're watching the tutorial for the interactive SEP, or Student Educational Plan. Uh, I'm just going to take you step by step through how to set one up, get one going for your students, and uh, hopefully let you know how to work everything and make sure everything uh, is doing what you need it to do. So uh, the first thing you'll see here on my screen is my website, mathofmrward.club, that's C-L-U-B. And uh, the first thing you want to do is go to Resources for Students and Programs and then Adult Education Program Resources. And right here, the first two links that you'll see are the Interactive SEP. The first is just right here, and the second is actually written out Interactive Student Educational Plan. You can click on either one of those to find the most up-to-date version of the SEP that we have. So I'm just gonna click on it real quick. It's gonna open up a Google Drive shareable document, but you're not gonna actually be able to use it. There's nothing you can do on this document. It won't actually be interactive. So what I'm gonna do is click on Download, which is right up here in the top right corner. It's gonna download a version of that that I can open up on my computer just by clicking it and here we go. So this is the interactive SCP. It might look a little different from what you're used to. That's because there have been some updates to it. Uh, but the first thing you need to do is click on enable editing right here at the top of the page. So when I click on that. Now I can actually use the spreadsheet. Uh, and before I actually use it, I just want to show you the first page here, which is the instructions page. If I click on instructions, I'll be able to see a list of step-by-step -step things to help me sort of fill in the gaps and make sure that I have everything on there that my students are going to need, uh, things like their name, and how to select the textbooks, where to click things, that sort of stuff. But all these steps I'm going to show you as we walk through it together. So if I go back to SEP, right here at the top is a place for me to put my program name. So if I click right there, I can write whatever program I'm a part of. Uh, you can put the name of your college or the name of your different campus or whatever you are. Uh, and then the next thing you'll see is a blank here for student name. Now all the things you can type in are in yellow. Anything that's in white, you can't actually type in. You'll get a, an error message when you try to type in there. But uh, you can type a student's name, so I'll just type in fake student. That's my fake student name. Right over here, you're going to see the date issued. That date is automatically updated as soon as you open the spreadsheet, it'll be correct. So whenever you print this off, it'll have the right date that you actually printed this. Uh, the next thing you'll see is an instructor name place. I'll just go ahead and put my name on here, Mr. Ward. Uh, and then it gets into the interactive part of things. So I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is click on choose subject. When I click on my subjects, you'll notice there wasn't an arrow to click on right here, but when I click in the box, that arrow will appear. Uh, sometimes that arrow won't be there, but it'll be in that spot. So look for it or look for it to flash on your screen. But if you click in that area with this box highlighted, you will see a drop down menu. That drop down menu will have all of the different things on it uh, that your students can take on the tape test, like reading, math, and language. It'll also have science and social studies content, something that we've added recently. And then North Star, which is a digital literacy program. Uh, Aztec, which is an online uh, GED prep materials. And then Georgia Best, which is a soft skills training. So all sorts of different things are on there and more to come, obviously. But I'm going to go ahead and pick math because that's a big one for my students. And when I pick math, you'll notice at the bottom of the screen, right down here, right at the bottom of the screen, it says calculating. And as it's calculating, it's actually determining what I selected and the things that go with it. So give it a chance to calculate. And once it stops, once that area is blank, then move on to choose something else. So choose level, for example. I can choose lots of different levels. I can choose all of the TABE levels. L, E, M, D, and A. I can choose GED if I have a student who's really preparing just for the GED level. I can choose pre-HSE for some other content there, pre-high school equivalency. Uh, North Star, again, Georgia Best, and then all of the different Aztec levels as well. I'm just going to pick M-Level Math. M-Level Math has the most uh, different skills in it, so I'm going to go ahead and pick that. And again, it's going to calculate down here at the bottom of the screen. Uh, You'll, when it finishes, you'll see a list of domains, and those domains are things that are going to be on the tape test, tested in math level M. Uh, the percentages off to the right-hand side of each one show exactly how much of the tape test is about that particular subject. So you'll notice the largest subject is number and operations fractions. That's the largest section of the test, but it is only 20%. 
Uh, the smallest section of that test is ratios and proportional relationships, only 3% of the M-level math tests. Now those things change as you move up into D or A or as you move down into E and L, but all of those things are there. So you can sort of judge for yourself which one a student might need to work on the most. You can also see this on the score report for the students uh, from their tape test. So if you print out that score report, you can see these domains and you can see which ones they scored non-proficient, partially proficient, or proficient in. And as you look at those and judge for yourself which ones of those your students should be working on, you can choose in these select boxes right over here which of those you want to show up on this interactive SEP. I'm just going to select a few to show you how it looks. So I'm going to select this one, this one, this one, and as I select them you'll see that down here it's calculating and as it calculates it's going to populate a list down below for different things that I selected. Now I selected measurement and data 15%, numbers and operations base 10, and geometry or a, C, and E, those three categories. And as I scroll down, you'll see the skills that are listed are in the A section, the C section, and the E section. Now those are just letters, that's all they are to keep track of things. They don't correspond to any sort of standards or any sort of uh, situation with the tape testing. It's just a classification. So all of the A skills have to do with measurement and data. All of the C skills have to do with number and operations. If I select a few more, say I select these two here, it will populate the list with those as well and so now I'll have G's and H's as soon as that list populates there we go so G's and H's are now on the list the last thing I need to do because right now all I have is skills and standards that match those skills but I don't have any assignments for the student yet and if I want my student to work independently or if I want my whole class to work on something that's based on this as well what I need to do is choose a textbook or program to go along with this and it's very easy to do and there are lots to choose from so if I go here to to textbook program and select my textbook or program right here in this box again a drop down menu right here it is a little bit higher up than the others because this one takes up two uh, rows but if I click this drop down menu I'll see all the different textbooks and programs I have to choose from and more of these get added all the time uh, the first few that you see North Star Aztec Georgia best we've talked about those already but then you get into some textbooks like Tabe Tutor by Paxson Publishing Score Boost by uh, New Readers Press, Common Core by McGraw Hill, lots of different ones to choose from. The Kaplan books um, by New Readers Press, Fundamental Skills by Steck Vaughn, uh, all sorts of different things to choose from. And again, more to come all the time. But I'm just going to pick one to show you real quick what will happen when I pick it. Math Level M, Tabe Tutor by pa Paxson Publishing. When I click it, the first thing you'll see is a picture of that textbook pop right up, which is really nice. The students really like that. It helps them find those textbooks a little easier in your classroom and hopefully helps you as a teacher uh, locate those materials if you're not familiar with them. But down here, you'll see it gives you page numbers to work on for that particular textbook that match these particular skills and these particular standards. It really is nice to be able to do that for my students to show them exactly what they need to work on based on their tape test scores. That was the whole point of designing this interactive SCP for them. If I change the textbook and say I go to score boost, you'll notice the picture changes and I have the score boost materials listed as well. Not just page numbers for score boost, but also which book it goes with because there are several books in the math sections. I believe there's three and it goes all the way through math three there. So your students will have what they need. Again, if I want to change it one more time, go to Common Core uh, Basics, that's E and M level, which this would be. There's pictures of them, and here it is, all the different page numbers to work on. Your students can work on those very easily, get them the way they need to be. When I print this out, uh, I, I want my students to have exactly what they need, but not more. I don't want to waste anything, don't want to waste any paper. So I don't really want to print out all three pages. Uh, instead, what I will do is select just the pages I need. So if I go to File and Print, rather than printing page one, two, and three, I'm just going to print pages one and two. That way I won't get that blank page at the back. If I just want page one, very easy to do. Or if I want all three, don't have to worry about it. Just hit print and I'll print all three. I won't print any others because there is no content on any other pages. If I go back to the main page, I just want to show you the last little places I have. This is for students and instructors to actually write things in. The way that I use this is I have students write in their start date and their finish date. That just helps me keep track of where they are and what they need to work on uh, and how much they've gotten done so far.
I, I may tell students to start on something and go in a certain order. Other times, especially with math, I may say find the lowest page number, like here is page 15 and 16, or here's 12 to 16. That may be better places to start than starting with page 274 because that seems like it is kind of a long way off and maybe there's a little more they need to work on before they get to that page. So uh, the start and finish date, that's just to keep track of what they've already done or what they're currently working on. Uh, the next thing you'll see here is score or outcome. That's just a way to keep track of how well they did. Uh, I tell my students, if you you know did this assignment and it was very, very easy, you got all of them right, or you missed one or two, but you, you just made a quick little mistake and you understand it completely, then give yourself a nice A plus or 100% or I'm doing fine. You can write out a message to me or to yourself there. That way we kind of know if you're having trouble or if you have sort of mastered that skill. On the ones that you don't do very well on, like say rounding, just, just got you. Well, rounding needs to have something on there that lets me know that's definitely a place to keep working. If I'm grading them myself, which I sometimes do, I'll tell my students, or I'll write myself a note there uh, about how many they got right or wrong, uh, what they might have been struggling with, that sort of thing. And that bleeds into the instructor comment section, which is the last section. Sometimes I'll just initial this just to sort of sign off and say, yep, I saw that, they did great or whatever. Uh, the other times I might put some things in there. I might actually give them a secondary assignment or some homework, uh, something like that to kind of supplement what they were working on. Uh, just or just let myself know that that's something they were struggling with and maybe there's four or five other students in the class who were struggling with that and this might be a good one to do a whole lesson on or a whole you know series of lessons on to make sure they really understand a certain concept. So uh, that's what we like to do with these uh, interactive SEPs. I hope this tutorial was helpful and uh, as always if you have any questions, you can contact me through mathofmrward.club. Uh, I'm just going to go back to that website real quick and show you where you can get in touch with me. So on just about every page, there is a place to click on if you have questions for Mr. Ward. So down here at the bottom of the page, there's one. Or contact Mr. Ward right here at the top of the page. Uh, well, thank you all very much, and I hope this was very helpful. And if you have any questions, as always, just get in touch with me. Thank you.